If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Yeah. 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 Sending out good vibes. 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 Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. What she was trying to do is she was trying to balance out the male and female energy. She was trying to empower female energy with those sensitivities. But it got bastardized and she developed theosophy. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America Show. We are going to be chatting with Jen Ward a little bit later about some Helena Blavatsky stuff. Which is interesting timing because we just had the Secret Doctrine, Doctrine Volume Three came out. It's now available on Audible, iTunes, all those great places. We've got the full three volume set now put together. Which I think the third is the best, actually. Do you? Uh, personally, yeah. I, I made a little. Made, I made an Instagram post of it and I highlighted. Actually, I wanted to read that. I meant to read. I meant you haven't to read been reading that. the reviews, have you? No. Don't. Oh really? Yeah. Oh boy. Don't tell me that. <laughs> okay. What? It's only going to be, once there's thousands of people listening yeah. to it, it's going to get but pretty, yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Nobody else would go for it, so That's I went right. for it. That's know, right. Whatever. What were they saying? I think the one- Leave is, a good review. The one is titled, uh, the, secret, the, the, the Secret Mispronunciations of All Ages. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? A lot of them are subjective. You can't find pronunciations. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going for it. Like, if you get, I'm not going to spend like- Two full days looking for pronunciations of words oh, that yeah, are there. Like, right. it's just like, I mean, you have your own way of pronouncing stuff. That's it. Just people just need to get on board. That that too. Yeah, that too. But that's okay. You're like my mom. She says savvy instead of savvy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what about? But here's the thing. What about like aluminium? Aluminum, you mean? Yeah. Like, so that's okay. Just people can pronounce that different ways, but other words are taboo to pronounce in me another way. Well, I guess it's just a volume thing on how yeah, many exactly. people pronounce it each If way. it's a whole culture or a language, then. Like subsequent? Well, I, tr- I get away. I, I fixed that one. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. It's a subsequent? Yeah. You fixed it? Yeah, I tried you to. You're yeah. updating your vernacular. I'm trying all the time, yeah. There you go. Yeah, so leave a good review. you got to fight back against the, uh, he still gave you four stars. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably pretty. <laughs> Seems like you appreciated it. Appreciated it. It's a long book to read. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're they're grueling. They're tough reads, man. I'm telling you. Like every sentence has four paragraph, four commas, two dashes, and three sets of brackets. I mean, honestly, it's, I th- I think the three secret uh, doctrines. Yeah, I think uh, the three of them are hundred hours combined, or about a hundred hours of listening. Yeah. Imagine how long it takes to read. <laughs> Probably double. It's almost double. I cut off about 30% yeah. or whatever you yeah. slap on. So, yeah. Check but all I do have out. a quote. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to send my, an email to myself here because I got a quote uh, from the end of that book. Like, th- that is my favorite one. Um, I'm just going to see how it, when it comes through here. You have a quote from the end of the book? Yeah. You've been saving? Yeah. Quote saving? Where's my, uh, should I play the quote jingle then? Is this going to be the quote? I didn't go for it. Remind me to tell you more about Jen Ward, because it's not really about Blavatsky. It's about spiritual freedom technique. True. Yeah. Darren, can you guess it? I think I'm going to be able to guess this one. <laughs> Can you guess the human who spoke it or wrote so it down? The, the reason why I say this is just because it's the end of the book and it, it kind of has context to what's happening right now about sort of a spiritual awakening and all, right? Like she says, one who belongs to that which we call the useless portion of mankind. That is to say the, the lay majority is in many cases irresponsible crimes committed in avidya or ignorance. 
involve physical but not moral responsibilities or karma. And then she talks about, you know, you cannot invoke this divine. Let me let me go back a bit. Take, for example, the case of idiots, children, savages, and people who know no better. But the case of each who is pledged to the higher self is quite another matter. You cannot invoke this divine witness with impunity. <laughs> and once that, you have put yourselves under its tutelage. You have asked the radiant light to shine and search through all the dark corners of your being. Consciously, you have invoked the divine justice of karma to take note of your motive, to scrutinize your actions and enter up all in your account. So, and they're saying basically it's like an infant birth and never again can you force yourself to look back into the matrix of avidya and irresponsibility. So it's, it's super, I don't know, to me it's like, it's talking about waking up from the masses and you can't, you can't go back. It's like the, you can't unsee what you've, what you've seen, you know, though you can flee to the uttermost parts of the earth and hide yourself from the sight of men or seek oblivion in the tumult of the social world, that light will find you out and lighten your every thought, word and deed. The more you know. I'm guessing Helena Blavatsky. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then it says uh, that if karma re relentlessly records the esotericist account, bad deeds that in that in the ignorant would be overlooked. Yet equally true is that of his good deeds by reason of his association with the higher self, a hundredfold intensity as a potentiality for good, a hundredfold intensified. So, and then, he, and then at the end it says, uh, the holy light is shining into your honor of spiritual need and aspirations, and it will be no fault of the masters or of their humble mouthpiece and servant. If through perversity or moral feebleness, some of you cut yourselves off from these higher potencies and step up upon the declivity that leads to Avicii. I don't know. It's pretty, pretty deep, but I don't know. It feels like that's what's happening right now. I think so. And this is like in the late 1800s, you know. 150 years later, we're still dealing with it? Yeah. Or do you think there was an awakening and then a re-unawakening? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. When was the awakening? In this, it was this. It was the whole theosophist movement, the spiritual awakening. In you know, when they were fighting against materialism back then, like this is the interesting thing: is she, they were fighting against the religion and materialist science back then, the dogma of scientism back then too. They lost. Well, no. That, well, they're losing. Let's say. They're I mean, losing. they're we're winning. I mean, it's they've science lost. Well, no, I shouldn't say that because the next quote I have is pretty damning of of science, but. Let's hear it. I'll save that for I'll save that for next show. You'll save that one, yeah, for okay. next episode. Anyways, this Jen Ward is um, she's done this whole lexicon of spiritual freedom technique and the tapping. So if anybody's right. interested in tapping, tapping, and the affirmations that go along with tapping, tapping your head and your heart and your abdomen, that type of thing, um, it's a whole Bible book basically of all the different ailments and what you do for affirmations and how to. Tap your way out of that stuff. Did you try your elbow shoulder tap thing there for no, your bad arm? No, yet? I didn't. No, my arm's okay. I'm I'm okay with it. Like it's it's a physical. Like here's the thing. It's a physical bone break, right? Like I physically cannot move my arm anymore. Like I've oh. done everything. Like it's a physical. From when you broke it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. You can't really get it. I can't. It's that, it's, I it's you know it's kind of hard to to heal. Like you know, not that I would have some belief in that being able to happen, but. That's a bit harder to grasp. I can't find my jingles on this stupid phone. Where uh, I can't find the good old uh, email jingle. How about this one? I won't cry. It's a happier place to be. I won't cry, America. Spam Graham line. Graham at Gramerica.com. We don't get as much emails as we used to, eh? No, because people are on all the, you know, they're in the chats, slash chats, Great America slash chats, right? They're in the, you know, all the telegrams and the discords, and people are communicating through other ways, right? I think. But, wow. but yeah, send emails. Send we still emails. get some. Yeah. Spam gram. All right, let's hear it. What one? Or this is, uh, or is this not an email? It's an Instagram? Yeah. This is just some good feedback from Instagram. It's uh, from To Serve as a Lighthouse. And you guys have the, the absolute best podcast in the entire world. 
I have to add more words to my internal dictionary, but you guys have the most vast, deep diving, intricate, unique, collaborative, probing, open-minded, real and raw podcasts. From the topics to people, it's really amazing to witness your guys' synergistic energy together. It makes me feel like I'm just chilling with the guys like Eric, like with, with us guys in Eric Foreman's basement. So we really appreciate that feedback. And speaking of that, we just had a few episodes deleted from Spotify because I guess they don't really like our content very much. Yeah. It was like October 2020. They took away Greg Carlwood, Charlie Robinson, and uh, Union of the Unwanted. And Hopefully we did start not up, going you know, backwards I hope that. they're not going backwards, you know. Um, they might find some things they don't like. Yeah, they might. I mean, we, you know, I mean, this is only Spotify, but still, it's just, a, it's a bad sign, right? It's a bad sign that they're taking that much effort to take our older shows off of their catalog. So that's why we, we started up this other show called Grey America Outlaw that addresses a lot of those deeper, to- uh, more controversial topics that uh, we used to talk about, or we used to struggle talking talking about on this show. Rob from Libsyn asked, whose puppy I killed I know, at Spotify? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone. Maybe someone that works at Spotify just doesn't like, they don't like your mispronunciations in the audiobook. Yeah. Getting our stuff booted off of audio. Off of Spotify? Spotify. Would yeah. that be it? No, it's it's, it's just trigger words. Had a, it's just no. Look, they're going after the union they wanted people, which is Charlie again because Charlie's had some stuff happen, and Greg Carlwood. I mean, this is just what they're just going Greg? down the they're just going down the cycle of the what starting Greg? with all the Rogans and all. Well, he's he's on the list of the people that are. You know, it's it's a it's a, I think it's a uh, it's Charlie and Greg have their own shows, and the union is another show, and they're just going sort of cycling down from the most popular down towards, you know, taking, taking out all these people that have other platforms. Ping, ping, pong. Ping, ping, pong. I mean, it's disgusting. The censorship right now is off the rails. It's unbelievable. Hmm. Yeah. That's why you have to check out GrammaricaOutlaw.ca. Sign and up support for plus, your local, support your local independent media. Is there any local independent media? Not local. Did I say local? You know yeah. what I meant. In, small. Small little, independent media. Little. Support your local podcaster. America.ca slash support. Weeklies, monthlies. There is no weeklies. There's only monthlies or one-time donations. But yeah. do one of those. It helps. Really helps. Couldn't do it without that stuff. The show would cease to exist without the support. Yeah. America.ca slash support. What are you putting your spectacles on for over there? I'm putting my spectacles on for a note from one of our past guests. Uh-huh. Um, I hope this finds you well and full of love and light during these strange times. I've moved to Costa Rica two months ago, and I'm seeking stronger than ever to build a village out here, free from oppression and full of love, light, and potential. I'm not sure guys, how you guys are seeing the world these days, but if you ever want to do another interview or just have a chat, here's what I'm all about these days. Spiritual evolution. We are a Canadian group united in the wake of corrupt media government and big tech censorship relocating to Costa Rica in mid-2021. We disseminate information on... The mainstream media chooses not to while sharing our journey to the new paradigm paradigm of consciousness. So, I mean, that's a great solution right there, right? Just build your own, right? In Stay Costa around. Rica? Yeah. So, that was from Kyle Sheveldayoff. Um, Isn't Costa Rica yeah. part of the States? Or is that Puerto Rico? That's Puerto Rico, I know. Yeah. I know a lot of people are going to Costa Rica. Some, there's something, I guess there's some sort of um, freedom over there or something that people... Is there? I don't know. I haven't looked into it, but I heard, I saw a couple memes like why U.S. are moving out of Costa Rica. And I think that would, could have been more of like sort of misinformation and disinformation, but it seems like people are moving down there. I'd have to look into a whole bunch of stuff before I moved into I think, some new government situation. Yeah, exactly. I think that's where Paul Saladino, um, uh, the farmer, no, the meat, he's the animal product guy, oh, the, right. meat, the meat guy, the carnivore, carnivore diet. He's, is that I think where he's the in Costa Rica. Uh, Boga retreat was too? Yeah, that's where that is. So. Hmm. Interesting. Eh? So my buddy Rye just moved to Mexico today. Oh, is he gone and, now? And he got a he got a a sign. He was walking by somebody and they were talking on the on their Bluetooth. And they turned to look at him and while they were still talking on their the Bluetooth, they said, um, the stars will align. Like right and looked right at him. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> On the day he's moving away from Canada to he's Mexico. He's flying to Mexico today? Yeah. Huh. Well, good luck, Rye. Yeah. I don't think I'd leave Alberta right now. 
Yeah, well, it's a t- it's a tough call, but when they made that you know when they made that choice, it was looking pretty bad here. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm still not convinced that this isn't just sort of a trap or a test or something. Oh, it could, Something's going on. Could totally be a not, trap. Yeah, because we're pretty free right now. Got most of most of the restrictions lifted, right? In Alberta. Yes. Yeah. Same with Saskatchewan and Manitoba, or because. I haven't looked into it, but I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Look, okay. I don't look. I into thought it. you might or have heard from pay attention. I mean, I'm sure there's a chance it'll all fire back up. I think they said the kids aren't wearing masks or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it will fire back up. It's definitely a possibility. But if it does fire back up, I think I'd just rather be here. Yeah. Than uh, yeah, someplace unknown, unknown yeah. where I don't have as much of a support structure. Or Things like that. But they do have a support structure there. So I want to go to Mexico and get my teeth done. But yeah. Mexico's getting weird again. I know. I was just getting, it was all opened up here. So I start thinking about going down to Mexico to get the bit of dental work I got done because it's so much cheaper there. It's worth it. And now it seems like Mexico's going to get weird. Yeah. So they're not going to let me come down there, I don't think. Yeah. But we'll see. We're going to have an election here, I think. Uh, they better do it now. Well, they can, so they can get, I heard get themselves like right now. Get themselves back in, so they I heard can lock us down. I mean, honestly, how do you how do you not look at this from a conspiratorial view? I mean, they're going to do it now, but well, they can because if they wait till the fall, there's no way they're going to get back in if they're locking everything down again in the fall and and really pushing against, you know, pushing against the unjabbed. I mean, this is coming. It's, it, I it, think it it's going to backfire. On them. I don't think it will, dude. They can they can get whoever they want in in power. The East wins all the time. They got it. Ontario's got still locked down right now. Really? And Ontario's got an, Ontario's but also got a con, conservative, uh, conservative provincial government that they just voted in like fucking a couple years ago. So if I was Justin, I'd be a little worried about the Ontario vote right now. Well, obviously they know how to do it. They've. I mean, well, the problem is he doesn't have enough power to do anything right now. So it's a gamble. Do you want the power? Well, it's yeah. almost a referendum on Canada's COVID response. If the votes matter, which I'm not sure they do. That's what I was just going to say. They but, probably have their way around that. But if they do, I mean, that's what it's going to turn into. I mean, most of the liberals I know, I've had it with Justin Trudeau. And I know quite a bit of people that voted for Justin Trudeau. Lots of them that are like, never again. It's going to be interesting. He'll still get Quebec. I think there's a whole bunch of people that just still love, they love the restrictions. They love the, what's happening. They love the pushing people to get jabbed. They, they want, they want it. I think the majority of people want what's happening from the government. Well, if that's the case, then we don't really have a leg to stand on. Exactly. Because we've lived in a democratic society where we've agreed to mob rule. Yeah, exactly. So do you want to raffle off a CAC ticket? Is that, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we got we one donated from Bernie D. So this is contacted the cabin in September. Scablands in September. It's just in a couple of weeks. It's yeah. in like five weeks or now, six yeah. weeks. We're going to raffle it off August 31st, okay. which will give you about three weeks to get ready. The trip starts September 20th. That's about $2,600 U.S. value. That includes your meals, lodging at the resort, all the... I mean, basically with the ticket, all you would need to do is get yourself to Seattle. From wherever you are, get yourself a return plane ticket to and from Seattle. We're going to pick you up there, take you to the resort, feed you all week, take you on a tour, drop you back off at the resort. Um, so we've got about three we'll weeks. Drop you, or, back, drop you back off at the airport. At the airport, yeah. yeah. So, Or if you live closer by, you can drive, whatever you want to do. That's up to you. Um, but the entire price of the event, food, lodging, that'll all be covered. We've sold, I think, only a few tickets so far, but the Snake Bros are announcing it now. Cosmography is going to announce it. So it's going to sell fast. And uh, basically to get in on that, it's $25 for one ticket or $50 for three. We'll do the draw August 31st, and whoever wins is in. And uh, Hopefully we can cover our expense on it. To do that, well, it was a donation to us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you want to get in on that, head over to – or just go to PayPal – and send in the twenty five or fifty dollars to contact at the cabin at gmail dot com is the PayPal address. Uh, if you're having any trouble with that, just email Graham or I, and we'll get you sorted one way or another. But let us know or buy a ticket if that's something you want to do. When the notes, when you do a PayPal, uh, send PayPal like that. There's a little thing that'll pop up where it says notes or message. 
just type in there your email address because uh, sometimes the sometimes the email address that's hooked up to your PayPal isn't the same email that you're they using want. all the time. Yeah, so yeah, we've yeah. had some problems there. So just put your email in the notes, and whoever wins, we'll pick an email address. We'll let you know. We'll email you, and you'll get in on the Randall Carlson tour. With Randall Carlson, the Brothers of the Serpent, the Snake Bros are going to be there. Graham and I are going to be there. Ben from Uncharted X is going to be there. And, of course, Brandon Powell will be there giving us the Wim Hof fucking treatment. Yeah, It's going awesome. to be a fantastic event. I can't wait to get back down there again. It's going to be much hotter this time. but That's good. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It's going to be much hotter. In the spring, it's nice because I'm coming out of winter here, but now it's been fucking hot here all yeah. winter and go down there. It's going to yeah. be even hotter. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a beautiful spot. There's a lake right there you can swim in. We've added an extra day, so it's six days this time instead of five. So if you have any trouble on that, shoot me an email, but you are going to want to get in on that sooner than later. Right on, buddy. Well, do you want to do a quick uh, operation project and then we'll wrap this thing up? Or? You got an oppo? I do. I think you should do a different quote too. The other quote didn't do it for me. Hey, who's uh there's someone in our room in our Zoom room right now. Oh, oh yeah. that's probably yeah. our guest for yeah. the next interview. Yeah. Well, maybe we can save it for next. Let's save the let's save the op for next. Well, time. no, we got to no. do okay, it. We got to get a little. We're not it. there yet. Let's do it. Where's the wapo? That's going to be this one. No. That's going to be I always lose that one. It was missing because it's titled under a different jingle. That's why. Ah, okay. What, what, what's that noise? It looks military to me. Definitely military. Probably classified too. Dish fire. Prism. Sentry eagle. Sigma. Mannerkin. Artichoke. MK Ultra. Operation project. Project operation. So th this is a little dark, and it led me down a bit of a rabbit hole. So I'm going to just briefly cover it, and I'll put links in the show notes. All this. So this is, Darren, this is Operation Sleeping Beauty, mind control. I mean, we've all heard about, you know, MK Ultra and MK Often and all these. but and I, So I don't know if this, this one is, uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is how true this is, but I, I got a couple different things to go, like kind of a couple articles here to go through. So it was, it was during the Reagan and this is, this is the West coast news and discussion saying operation sleeping beauty, mind control during the Reagan administration, a top secret project operation sleeping beauty was initiated. And its purpose was to examine the possibility of using electromagnetics to disrupt the functioning of the human nervous system. They explored a list of what seemed to be like foolish notions but in fact are technical reality. Some, so some of the ideas they explored were the focus and the use of artificially generated electromagnetic fields. So basically to unhinge a man's mind, to paralyze the, and the capacity to reason and react, to induce a fit of rage, a state of panic or lethargic state of indifference, all at the throw of a slit switch and to induce physical reactions. And this is, this is, there's also, this also kind of has to do with, um, the marijuana frequency. Well, they're also trying to find different frequencies that make people laugh. And from the article above, Persinger, do you remember that Michael Persinger in the God helmet? He had worked to recreate alien abductions in the lab using electromagnetic waves. Remember that? And the scientists were using it to say, hey, all the stuff happening in your mind, there's no paranormal experiences because it all happens with the chemical interactions in your brain and all that with these electromagnetic impulses. So if we can induce an abduction, then abductions aren't real, really. <laughs> doesn't mean that they're not real just because you can induce it. You remember that? Somewhat. In the back in the, when we started podcasting. So anyways, then it led me to this website called Fighting Monarch, which is a resistance site for victims of CIA, NSA, and M5, MI5, and Illuminati mind control. And they talk about sleepwalking and dreams within dreams. And apparently it wasn't diagnosed till the 1800s. Didn't we just talk to someone else about like abductions being all in your head? Like a... Yeah. But it's still being real. Yeah. When the demon shows. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. There's a couple of those shows on Outlaw. We talked about Where demons they can just recently. hijack your consciousness. Yeah. Which might seem weird to you, but I mean, smoke a fucking giant blast of some DMT and you tell me you had some and tell me where your consciousness went. Yeah. And sleepwalking began to be studied shortly after the rise of modern hypnotism, which is weird. So could the two be related? And uh, there's a lot of purposeful disinformation about sleepwalking, and they get into that, and then they get into uh, this society that's headquartered in Washington to study it. 
The Sci- Society for Science and the Public stated that sleepwalkers acted out our dreams in 1954, only to say the opposite 12 years later. Uh, oh, there's some creepy, creepy pictures on this article of the scientists. Um, other studies on sleepwalking came from Stanford, a hotbed of MK Ultra mind control, which is also interesting. It's not hard to see psychology as the disinformation campaign it is, especially since psychiatrists developed the government's mind control programs. Um, I'm going to f- scroll down a little bit here. Sleepwalkers act as if they're under mind control. They are in a trance state. They perform complex ap- actions and they do not remember their experiences. Could they? Could it be that they're victims of MK Ultra, who, like so many, are undiagnosed? And then gets into Operation Sleeping Beauty, which affected millions of Americans. Our programmers use different rings, tones, and command words over the telephone to put us into trance. And then you can see this cartel signaling around Sleeping Beauty in films like Manchurian Candidate, Help, or The Curse of the Jade Scorpion, where hypnosis is used over the phone. And then it led me down to, like, th- it gets quite, this gets quite detailed in here. And then it led me to... Uh, how the Illuminati create an undetectable total mind controlled slave. And then it gets into um, telepathy, telepathy and the technology of mind control. And I'm going to link to this article in here and it it talks about synthetic telepathy and the early mind war. So this is going back to uh, like the forties and the fifties. And there was a Japanese death ray that they tried to make in 40 to 45 They found out there was these Japanese researching the development efforts on a death ray. Um, What else was there in here? I'm surprised they don't have a death ray yet. Yeah. So they talk about, so there's, you know, I mean, this is narco hypnosis was another thing that they were doing. There was Project Moonstruck, Project, they talk about Project Chatter, Paperclip, MKUltra, Project Orion, MK Delta, um, John C. Lilly and Delgado. It's it's super fascinating. I'm going to go into there's Operation Pandora as well. Pandora's then, box, and then it um, gets into anti personnel electromagnetic weapons, and this is like from forty from the 1940s through 95. It can be traced to the early to mid 40s and possibly earlier. That that they, that's where they get into the U.S. Uh, strategic Bombing Survey which was the Japanese research and developments on the death ray. And then they get into, uh, after that, it's uh, behavior modification and mind manipulation, manipulation going back to the Nazi doctors in Dachau. That's kind of why I want to talk about this too, because a lot of this was from 47 and uh, in the 40s. And Jen Ward was talking quite a bit about Hitler and uh, how he was using stuff from... Blavatsky and all them. So then they get into primary uh, focusing on narco hypnosis. These covert programs were extensive and were assigned project titles like MK Ultra, Delta, Naomi Research, uh, Search, Bluebird, Artichoke, Chatter. Chatter. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to see some other stuff in here. Synthetic telepathy. And then it goes into a whole thing about the holographic concept of reality. And this goes back to like research from the government and universities, embryonic holography. So I'm going to put this in the, uh, in the show notes as well. It's quite a long thing on uh, biological amplification, synthetic telepathy. In in uh, in seventy five, A W Guy stated that one of the most widely observed and accepted biological effects of low average power electromagnetic energy is the auditory sensation evoked in man when exposed to pulse microwaves. So he con- concluded that frequencies where the where the auditory effect can be easily detected, they penetrate deep into the tissues of the head, causing rapid rapid thermal expansion. So today, the ability to remotely transmit microwave voices inside a target's head is known inside the Pentagon as synthetic telepathy. According to Ro- Dr. Robert Becker, it, was, it has applications in covert operations designed to drive a target crazy with voices or deliver undetected instructions to a programmed assassin. Could you put a Faraday bag over your head <laughs> maybe to get away from that? Yeah, they get that Spiro clothing from yeah. Matt. Matt, Matt uh, Just line your Matt room 
Line your room in the shit. At least you could get some sleep. Yeah. Anyways, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Silent sound, cloning the emotions, mind reading devices, unclassified elf type weapons, specific elf weapons. So I'll put it all in the show notes. There you have it. Uh, we'll have to get you out here soon shooting the handgun at the range. Sure, buddy. See if you can handle it. I can't. I've shot a handgun before have in you? Israel. In yeah, Israel? In, in the Canadian, there was a, a Canadian at the UFO? in the north uh, of Israel. There was a place where you could go uh, skate, ice skate. There was like a Canadian center kind of. And, and I think I think that's where I shot the handgun, yeah. They let you have some gun fun? Yeah. There you have What kind of gun? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed our lazy ramblings here this week. We hope you'll consider supporting the show over at America.ca slash support. Check out adultbrain.ca for the audio books. Check out GrammaricaOutlaw.ca for some more podcast action. Most of all, enjoy the chat with Jen. We've got Jen Ward with us. She's a dynamic healer and executive coach and group facilitator. And she's got a new book out, SFT Lexicon, the SFT Lexicon, and some other books like Enlightenment Unveiled and Emerging from the Mist. Uh, She's the creator of the SFT Tapping Protocol, which is the spiritual freedom technique. So, uh, yeah, welcome, Jen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's nice to meet you guys. Yeah. I, I don't think we've ever really got it. I mean, I know about, I've known people that have done the tapping, the spiritual freedom mm-hmm. technique. And I don't know, Darren might be able to help me here, but I don't think we've ever really done a full episode on this kind of thing, on the on the tapping and the spiritual freedom technique. Because a lot of people really swear swear by it that it works. Yeah. I don't think we have. Maybe a partial episode. Yeah, we might have touched it. come up yeah. a few times. Yeah, it's probably come up a lot. For There's a lot of different multidisciplinary healers and stuff we've had on. I mean, we've dug into a lot. A lot of the stuff that you talk about, we've dug into in, in separate mm-hmm. types of episodes. I mean, a lot of it is about, it seems like it's about intention and manifestation as well. Absolutely. And removing blockages to your own joy, love, abundance, freedom, success, health, empowerment, wholeness, yeah. all that. Yeah. So the thing is about the difference between the SFT and other types of tapping is, um, for one thing, I'm assisting with all the tapping that's happening out there. So when you guys are using the book, I'm actually here assisting in energy. So what I've done is through the last few years, maybe lifetimes, is I've um, stretched my capacity to to um, feel feel what's happening to others because I'm really empathic, but like. Like I work with spirit guides, and the adepts have told me if you can help one person, you can help seven billion. So a lot of the work I do is to like stretch and see how much the human consciousness can actually assist humanity in uplifting. So that's a huge part of the intention of the books and putting that out there. Wow. So what? <laughs> what's? I was going to ask you that question. I mean, what's the difference between? tapping and your sft protocol is there any other other differences at all well yeah the ta- my tapping is um different than like there's other kinds of tapping but the spiritual freedom technique is to like delve at issues not only on the physical level or the emotional level of consciousness but also like the causal all your past records and your future records to release anything in there like i see images i see past lives i see future lives so you can actually change the trajectory of your future lives by releasing core issues that are showing up in your past lives and they come into the physical body through pain so i can like when i do a private session with someone I don't want to know anything about them. I just tune into their their Akashic records and their pain, 
And I can see what the core issues were way back when we we released those through tapping, and then they assist the present them to release them. And they prevent, because on the tappings, we say in our moments. So it's actually help, helping the moment, the past, and the present. So you can actually change the tra trajectory of your whole life. Like, and, and, and it works on the mental levels as well. So say you have a woman who... Um, She's married to a dirt bag, right? And she does all this stuff to get away from the dirt bag. And what does she do? She attracts another dirt bag. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a habit. And that's an engram from a past life and stuff. So we um, go into the core issue of why she's doing that, why she's attracting the dirt bags, and go to the core issue instead of trying to deal with, you know, the dirt bag in the present because that's not going deep enough for her psyche how how long how much of this is past life related quite a bit of it um, like does it end up coming uh, up over and over again for people well actually yeah i do see their past lives but if people don't believe in past, past lives that's okay because it's actually in their dna so if they don't believe in past lives they can still benefit from sessions with me because they can just Understand that I'm tapping into the DNA and something they're projecting in their energy field. But from, so, from but from your point of view, is it is it is a lot of it related to past lives? Like it's a, a sort of a holistic thing, and that's always included. Yes, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Huh. So how how does the ta how does the physical tapping um, connect, or how does it work with with what you're doing? Because if you're connecting to the Akashic records and people's like generational trauma or past lives. Mm -hmm. And you're pulling that. How does that? How does the physical tapping work? Is that just strictly releasing some physical thing, or how? How does that? No. I don't think I've ever really heard anybody explain how that works. I know, and I don't have like a, a metaphysical background. It's just all self-taught. So I'll do the best I yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With what I have. So the thing is, your mind is a three D printer, and it's it's always it's always um manifesting what you put out there. But humans have been trained to put out negative stuff. So, so even these like colloquialisms, oh, my heart is aching. Oh, my back is killing me. Those are actually <laughs> things that you're training your brain. So, so if you stop saying those things, just cleaning up your own verbiage is a huge level of release. And I, you know, and, um, and then um, deeper and stuff. It's like, um, there's, oh, Oh, okay, so so there was a woman that came to me when I just started like um, doing doing um, massage, right? And I, I learned to do massage, and I could move energy with my mind and 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 do healings on people using modalities. And it it wasn't like it wasn't faith healing. There was actually uh, um, there was actually something I was doing like pulling stagnant energy out of people and stuff but i was learning it through my massage practice so this woman came to me that she was like so sore she couldn't even move and it's like she want, came for a massage because that's all i thought i was doing so she came to me for massage and she laid on the table she goes don't touch me i'm in too much pain and i'm like how am i supposed to freaking do this <laughs> so she's laying on her back and just looking at me and i just blurted out because i was like new at this i go you were gang raped in a past lifetime I said that to her and her eyes got really big and that awareness just freaked her out because it wasn't a past lifetime. I saw it. It was when she was in high school. There were three teenagers. They cornered her in a men's bathroom, pushed her up against the, the sink and like took her down and, and raped her, three of them. And then she just, she just like put her pants up and just went home and never told anyone else about it. So after that, she realized that her dirty little secret was out there. I started crying, convulsing, crying, and I couldn't stop. And she's patting me on the back saying, it's okay, okay, it's okay. But she was comforting her own pain. I was releasing her pain that she wasn't comfortable doing. And I cried and cried. I mean, it wasn't pretty and stuff. And that was the whole hour. And so we didn't talk about it much. I go, there were three of them, right? And she goes, yeah. And that was it. And she just left for three months. When she came back, she said the pain was gone like 45% less. So the next time she came, same thing. I just touched her thigh or a part on her body where they would have like 
hurt her and I'd start crying or I'd go near her um, waist or her butt or whatever, wherever I went and start crying. And that's how I released even more of it. And so, so that's how I learned the connection between the emotional pain and physical pain. So then they just delved into from emotional pain to past life pain and then to mental anguish. Just because I've been doing this so long now, it's just, I have the experience. Like, my life has been so dysfunctional and um, abuse. I've been the, the product of abuse all my life. So when anyone comes to me with an issue, I have the compassion or the understanding of what they're dealing with because I've, I've experienced it. And that's the beauty of it. That's a similar vibration to the word, what they're dealing with. So the more people who have, like, difficult lives, they're in a more of a position to be, like, turn it around and, and be the healer using the SFT tapping if they need a modality. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, yeah. So the, the tapping, is that related to, like, let's say you th that first example with that woman and you're touching her knee or touching somewhere, and that is that similar to the way tapping would work then? Is it is it releases, so, like, energy through the physical or trapped blockages through the physical or something? No, actually what it's doing is waking up, waking up the, the – so the reason why affirmations don't work is because the ego is going to tell you no, I say I'm a size three. The ego's going to say, you're not a size three. You were never a size three. Look at all the times you failed, died, and you can't stop shoving food in your mouth, right? So that the ego's going to taunt you. So what you do is these tasks, think of them as affirmations that you're bypassing the ego's permission and just, just programming the, the 3D printer yourself without, like, Asking the ego's permission. Okay, so a tapping so, is a way to actually just bypass the ego with the affirmations then. And, which is huge because you've got to figure out that the ego is trying to keep you from being more aware. The ego's job is to keep you entrenched. And in, in, have you ever read Eckhart Tolle, The Pain Body? Yeah, yeah. So it's like the, the ego wants you to stay in drama and issues and stuff. But your higher self wants to get you free. So when I do private sessions with people, I'm connecting to their higher self and I'm talking to their higher self and ignoring the ego. Right. So it's, it's really an interesting, fascinating thing because they'll be saying something on the surface and it's not, a, it's not at all what's going on with them in energy. So there's a dichotomy going on with them and I have to ignore what they're saying, um, kind of handle them on the surface and deal with what's actually going on. But and bring them on the same page. And so when you tap on the head, you're, you're bypassing the ego. And when you tap on your chest, you're setting it in the body. Like you would set a watch, you would turn the thing and then like set it and then um, secure it into the body. And then when you tap on your abdomen, that's actually preventing the issues from scurrying into and hiding into a part of your body like the um like the intestines or the female anatomy and such. Okay, let's, so the tapping is in different places then? I I, yes, so let's let's do an example. Let's do an example then. Like say for the abdomen okay. or your stomach. Uh, well, they they all go together. I make noise, so when I make noises, they're they're uncomfortable to hear. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna think of something to tap that's relevant to you. Because are you sensitive to energy? Uh, I wish. Ah. Okay. <laughs> he cries from drums, so he's gotta be sensitive. To I'm sensitive, not <laughs> not to energy. <laughs> <laughs> you cry to drums? <laughs> not me. I have. Not all the time. No, no I, I gotta know this. How, how does that work? It's a, it must be the, the music or the vibration or like the Okay, the, uh... it's good. So I have a tap for you that might be relevant to you. Okay. Oh, here we go. Um so you're gonna say it three times with tapping on your head. Okay. A fourth time with tapping on your chest. Okay, in my heart. And then a yep. fifth time. With the same hand. With the same hand? Yeah. Okay. And then it looks kind of funny when you tap on your abdomen because it looks like something else sometimes. Okay. But it's just, you just tap me on the abdomen. Okay. Yeah, see, it looks funny. <laughs> and I'm going to make my noise, so I'm going to actually do this. Okay. For you. Darren, you can do it too. I should make the noise or I should tap? <laughs> no, no, you can make your noises all you want on your own time. No. <laughs> I mean, you can want to make your noises, noises to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. 
Did I forget what I was going to say? Darren threw me off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is relevant to you, okay? Oh, here's the thing I was going to say. I don't use the word I anymore because the I is like telling the ego. And oh, the, the yeah. I is like, think of the, the, using the word I is like your Siri for your um, computer. And every time you ask the Siri the question, it's going to like do this thing. And my Siri freaks out because it's like, like I, I'll come out and the Siri is like spinning and stuff and turning on for no reason. So it freaks me out. So we use the word we to bypass the ego even more. Oh, okay. Okay. And think, Okay. We, we as in all yourselves in a way. Yes, or your spirit guides, or for the humanity, right? Okay. Or you, me, and Darren. Yeah. You know, okay. Okay. Good. Darren's into this. <laughs> okay. So here's a tip I want you guys to do. Okay. <laughs> and it's relevant to you, just so you know. Okay. We release being separated from our tribe in our moments. We release being separated from our, our tribe, tribe in our in moments. Our you're going too fast. We release being separated from our tribe, and you pause in our moments. We release being separated from our tribe in our moments. In our moments. In our moments. In our moments. In all moments. In all moments. In all moments. <laughs> Come on, dear. dear. Keep them honest. We, we release being, being separated from, from our, our tribe, tribe in all moments. Pause <laughs> in all moments. <laughs> we release being separated from our tribe. In all moments. <laughs> we release being separated from our tribe. In all, in all moments. moments. <laughs> now, do your abdomen now, too. Oh, yeah. We, we release, release being separated, separated from, from our, our tribe. tribe in all in moments. All moments. <laughs> so I'll go from there, and then I'll find other taps as I do that with there, and I'll get other taps that... That I don't know your life or whatever, but I, I just. <laughs> so, uh, do you want to do another one that that came up or? or that gave, that gave me quite a bit of gas right there. I don't know. Gas? If that's, is that a release? Okay, or? so it's okay if you fart. That's fine. Well, I mean, I think I should get a vote. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sacrifice for the team there. <laughs> I think that's a I think that's a good example. I mean, okay. I, I was I was I was using that example for some for to also to help somebody else with with some stuff. So, and I'm literally separated from my tribe. Well, we all are. okay. So maybe I'm tapping into that other self, yeah. other person. But you want to do that other tap for that other person? Uh, sure. All right. I mean, I'm tapping. No, no, let, 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 no. I'd rather I'd rather not actually. I'd rather not get into the other the distant stuff right now. I just wanted to. I wanted to do that as an example to see. Okay, good. Yeah, you're the boss. I, I, yeah, you're I don't feel boss. comfortable doing it for the for the other person now. <laughs> um, so that's interesting because because it reminds me of animals who shake after they release to release fear. I heard one of our guests talking about that, and like if they if they have an encounter with a lion or something, let's say you know. Mm -hmm. Um, the gazelle or something might do this, like this shiver or shake, uh, to, to sort of reset things or to re release that, that, uh, flight or fight. Mm -hmm. I almost yeah, feel so like it's almost feel like it's kind of a similar thing in a way. Yeah. And actually what it can do is knock a human or it's good on pets, by the way. So it can knock, knock people or animals out of primal mode because a lot of the, think of it like. A lot of um, what's happening with humans to keep them in, you know, um, keep them controlled in a way in a group, like a herd mentality, is fear. So a lot of things that are introduced to them is fear. So it keeps them in fear, which like keeps them in primal mode. And when you're in primal mode, you got two choices, fight or flight. Right. So you don't have the You actually literally disconnect from your ability to discern. So that's like, um, so it's really important to like disconnect them from primal mode so they can actually think for themselves. Like, what what do you really think here instead of reactionary and knee jerk reactions? You know? so. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. So but I mean, I do think affirmations work, though. So, I mean, because you do mention like some I guess there's a lot of negative feedback for affirmations that people have. But I feel like they would be a positive thing if people do them properly. Yeah, I feel did. like so you're, here's, I feel here's like, the thing. Yeah. 
that's great that they work for you and they don't work for me. And I don't, so I'm missing something in my makeup that allows me to have confidence in myself for them, you know? So, so that's great. They work for you and affirmations are great, but the SFT tapping can work for a hundred percent people probably if they try it. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's a supercharge, like a way to supercharge your affirmations. Absolutely. It, It can't hurt to do it with the affirmations. And so your book, just to stay on this path before we switch gears a little bit, your book, this like this 500 pages, you've addressed all these different different problems with people are having, right? Every, everything from A to Z, all these different problems. And you have all these affirmations and tapping instructions for everything, right? This is like the Bible of tapping in a way, right? Absolutely. It's a, it's a Bible for self-empowerment, actually. Because a lot of people, a lot of people who like, bring something to humanity that's new, they expect to be the um, be-all, end-all of that thing. But with the SFT tapping, there's no group to join. There's no um, grand poopah. There's nothing. <laughs> it's not like you're feeding your energy to uh, um, someone else. You, you're just getting your power, power back for yourself. So when you say we take back all the joy, love, and abundance that this person has taken from us, we are you actually are literally taking back your energy. And you're removing all the trauma. So you're actually being able to remove things that have actually been done to you. So imagine that um, a woman's been raped. And um, so someone has shoved their hatred or anger into them, right? So... So that's hard to get out of there. We're not equipped as energy beings to realize how to get rid of this hate. You know, all the therapy in the world is great, but it's slow. And and with with one tap, you can, or a series of taps, you can remove all the hate that the the rapist has, has put in you. And so, like, these kind of things are actually my, my research is of being abused and, and, and having a, horrific life has actually been great great um research for everything in the book so how did you because you mentioned that one first example there when you were going to do the massage was that the beginning like when did you realize that you had this sort of ability or that you could tap into the akashic records was that from the time when you were abused no uh, um no um what happened was when i was a waitress when i was there was a couple things when i was younger like i would look go to the mall and I could look at someone and I could see them like a baby. I could see them as an old person or I could see a uh, old person as a baby or a young person and I could do it consciously. So I could look at them and just play with a different time for them and um, on the timeline, their own Akashic records. But then when I was waitress and this guy came in, he had this beard and a, and a um, pipe and I, he was a sea captain. And I just went to wait on him, and I go, you look just like a sea captain. He goes, that's really funny because I love the sea, but I'm afraid of it. So it was interesting. I just knew that he he was out at sea, and he died at sea. Off of, he got, you know, drowned off of his own boat or something. So it's just you listen to people, too, and, and they kind of do know their own past lives, but they don't know enough to put it together. So the SFT lexicon can help them put the pieces of their own life together. Because what's interesting is when you're doing a set of taps, and and it'll be like five words, and then people can't say it, they can't spit it out. And it's like, I don't know why I'm, I'm not being able to say this, because the ego is trying to prevent them from saying it. And so the ones that they have trouble saying are the ones that are more relevant for them to say and release. Okay. Did you, when you had that abuse happen to you, did you disassociate? Like, did, is this part of like how you connect to, to people's past lives or the Akashic no, records or. I never disassociate. I'm always present. Um, actually the guy who abused me kind of reminded me of my mother. So, uh, you know, as, as much of a sociopath he was, he, I have more nightmares about growing up with my family members then I, I don't have nightmares with him so yeah yeah it's just part of the thing it was tough thing so when i was in utero my mother was trying to figure out how to abort me the whole time right so here and i had the experience of being in utero and this sweet little baby just trying to like form its body and just 
doing that. And all the time she was trying to figure out how to kill me. Yeah. She tried, she was like really drunk the whole pregnancy and she tried to pickle me out. She tried to abort me, tried to knock herself downstairs and everything. And what was beautiful about that is I never knew why I had to have such an abusive mother. She didn't like me. She cursed me on my birth. But what, what was beautiful is the resistance that I get in doing what I do is so, so incredible with, you know, with the environment that we're in but that's what i just stated in that kind of resentment and resistance so so when people resist me i don't even notice it it's just like being in the womb for me so that was a beautiful epiphany that i had the perfect mother for the work that i do here and it gave me the strength to speak my truth without like worrying about what other people think do you find a lot of i've heard a lot of that recently about people dealing with their um trauma in the womb and, and, and it's funny because I never would have thought that, but now that you mention it like that and, and, and uh, knowing sort of more metaphysical things that we think are possible now, even in science, like that could be a, a real, a real problem, right? If, if the intention of the mother is in that state all the time, I mean, how much that affects the baby. Yeah, it would have been better for me if she could have just aborted me. That would have been great, but they were Catholic and I was the youngest of 10. She had nightmares about uh, given birth to me so it would have been much better for me if i could have just like flushed out of this lifetime and and landed somewhere else but that didn't happen for me there's a lot of um yeah so the the soul is listening when when um they're trying to come in and stuff so it's like they can't they can't be in the body because it's spiritual law that no two souls can operate space at the same time so they're there like listening and at, and and like affecting cravings and stuff, but they're they're not like in the uterus. They're just hovering. Right, right. So uh, where do you want to go from here? Darren, do you have any questions before I switch gears again? <laughs> I'm afraid of Darren's questions. Oh no. <laughs> No, I, I, I'm curious about how much these affirmations help reprogram your subconscious. Like if, 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 if I'm in a negative state of mind constantly, I'm trying to sort of switch that paradigm around. I feel like this is a good way. Like if you even, even just outside of the stuff that you're talking about, if I can start to train my mind to think positively and to start um, thinking this way, that's got to help the subconscious, right? And help my, my reflex to negativity change. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you just have to do each set of tabs once. So uh, uh, a thing I use is like harsh vibratory words. Like for you, if you want to do that, you would do, we release our mind. Can we, do we, can we say Yeah, you can swear. Yep. Yep. We remove all mind fucks in our moments. And that's like a real good one because the vibration of that is like, it's almost like your words are like scalpels and they lob off all that stuff. And so um, another one you could do is we remove all blockages to being positive. But I don't know if it's really great to always be positive because you want to be balanced. You want to have your positive and your, so you can, the key is to get to a neutral state and not to keep fluctuating between positive and negative. So that's why a lot of like what we do is like our transcendence is getting above the positive and negative and getting into a pure state of neutrality. The problem with neutrality is the human psyche is so used to um to converting nothingness into negativity and an example of that is a, a married couple who've been married forever and they adore each other but after a while they you know that that love doesn't strike anymore they've gone into a neutrality and then one of them will start like thinking like something's missing because they can't just enjoy that neutrality. They have to convert it into a negative just out of habit. That's a great point. That's why people just can't sit still or, or yeah. uh, how, how do you, how do we avoid conflict and war then using the law of attraction? I mean, you do have a lot of good stuff in your book about law of attraction and, and law of gravity and, and. Uh, well, well, actually the, the reason why, the law of attraction doesn't work. It's, it's not the only spiritual law. There's other spiritual laws. There's a law of um, reversed efforts. I was going to so ask you about you that try, one too, yeah. So the more you try something, the more you're like, um, 
you're putting a different charge on yourself that's going to actually repel them and stuff. So so that's why the tasks work really good because you can use them to attract what, like say you want uh, a life partner. You can do the task of we remove all blockages to find in our life partner. And so you can do the task and then you can relax your energy. You're not going to like obsess over it so much and try to consciously do it. Because what the... What the surface consciousness knows is not very much. So much of us is subconscious, like the physical is just the tip of the iceberg. So a lot of working on the psyche is like underneath the surface. And that's why the book is so great, because I've been doing private sessions, so many of them, that those are all the um, issues that someone would need to like help transcend. And, And for the war... Um, we have another book, um, The Turning Point. So so we have these people who will do the tabs for humanity. And, um, you know, you can actually actually prevent the war and stuff. Because what happens with war is that um, there's an intention there from someone, a nefarious person, and they actually harness other people's energy through suffering if you'll notice. So when suffering happens, it's used for by power mongers to generate their in- intention. So what I can do, because I'm good in energy, I mean, I'm not proud of much, but I know I can do this, is dissipate the psychic energy that they've stockpiled to use for the nefarious intentions. And I can just like Rip open their stockpile of that, like like an oil tank, and all the energy dissipates from that, and it's returned to the individuals. Huh. So the beautiful thing about that is that um, because I'm so ethical in doing this, is that it's not like I'm keeping any of that energy for myself. It's like all going back to the individual. So all through time, anything that has been taken. Um, from you through your lifetimes by nefarious energies is being returned. And you kind of can see that um, playing out in the world where more people are able to protest. There's more individuals speaking their mind. That's because of the work we're doing with the tapping is enabling them to get their energy back, to be able to like have an individual presence and um, uh, point of view. Hmm. Can you dig into a little bit more about the the spiritual law of reversed efforts? Yeah. So, so it's almost like um, like say you want money. Yeah. So money is n- neither positive or negative. It doesn't have a charge. So when you want money, and then you say, "Oh, I want money," you actually build up a positive charge for yourself, and you also. There's also a charge on money, like you want to attract it. So it's almost like two positives don't attract. So you're pushing it away with that intention. The better thing to do is to do the tabs in the book, where in past lifetimes, we were taught that money was the root of all evils, or that it was more pious to be poor than rich, or we've actually curses. Um, like someone who was rich who hid all the money, we would curse them and we would curse the rich. Now we don't want to be rich because in a past life we cursed the rich. So if we have money, we'll feel cursed. So there's tabs to remove curses because all a curse is is an intention that derails your own intention. So it doesn't have to be nefarious. It could be like a parent who won't let you go to, to art school because they want you to be a doctor. So they're kind of cursing your career. It's that simple. It's not nefarious. It's just derailing your intentions. So it's kind of like what you resist persists kind of thing, or or you're you're focusing so much on something that you're pushing it away instead of attracting it? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So, so that's why, so, and there's a steam behind that, because there's that want is behind there, that desire is behind there. So when you do the task, it dissipates that steam of want or desire, and so it brings you to a more neutral state so we, you can just allow the abundance to come to you. Okay. So so when I've done the um, people um, in past lifetimes, we've taken vows, like vows of poverty, vows of chastity. If people aren't attracting wealth, lots of times in the past life, they took the vow of poverty. So it's not like 
like money is taken away from them for no reason. They set that up, and it's up to them to release that vow. So when I've done that tap where I discovered that tap, and, and I had people recant their vow of poverty, next day they said, oh, I just got this, um, this um, tax return that I didn't know about, or I just got this estate money that I didn't know about. And it's just that simple, because if, if you're conscious, you're going to try to direct where the money comes from, and you couldn't possibly know where the universe can bring it to you. Yeah. So it's a, a form of like micromanaging the universe that doesn't work for you, because you don't have the whole picture in your physical makeup. So can that be, do you think that's what's happening in some of these other, these other sort of situations, you know, a lot of them psychedelic or the ayahuasca treatments in the, that they're doing down in South America, over on the West Coast of the USA, they're using psilocybin um, to treat depression and things like that. And they don't really know why it's working, but it seems to be working. And I mean, just what you're talking about there, but the vow of poverty makes me wonder about my own sort of DMT experiences. And because I don't really know what happened in them, but there's definitely been some some real directional changes since them. If I start looking at oh, them yeah. in that sort of context, I mean, yeah. just in a financial standpoint, it was a pivot point. In a positive way or negative? Positive. Positive, yeah. yeah. I think all the pivots were positive, I think, from that, yeah. probably, right? That's great. Um, I don't know enough about the ayahuasca. I know people who, who do it and swear by it, and I know people who've had scary experiences and didn't come through really well. I know that, like, like I've worked with, like, people who have done mushrooms, and then it, like, what it did was kind of melted a hole in their energy field, so then they always, like, saw something to the side coming at them, and it was, like, always scary and stuff. So um, what I had to do is go into their their energy field and actually re rebuild it for them. And um, I see that um, the human energy field is like this honeycomb kind of like it's got these weird ridges and, and so then there's a hole, I can see where the holes are sometimes. And so I patch it up for them and then they don't have the problems with the, the seeing the psychic things and stuff that, that happened when they took the mushrooms, but I don't have that much experience with the whole drug thing because I wasn't allowed to um, partake in that because probably my mind was I'm so sensitive that I probably would have gone off off kilter with it what about um, like dealing with resentments in a, in a big picture set, the setting, especially now with what's happening in the world, like there's people getting divided left, right and center and all these different ways I mean just, and, and people have to sort of you know try and not let all that stuff get to them, you know? How do you, how do you let go of these resentments? Like, it might not be I'm not resentful to a person or to something specific, but just to the division that's happening everywhere, you know? Right. So so what's beautiful about that is you don't have to name the person. So we all have, like, our opinions and thoughts of who and what, and, and they're different. It's a problem. So you can release um, all power mongers or um, um, all those who are... Um, who are trying to manipulate so you can do it more vaguely and you can do it for humanity and that way you don't have to name who the person is because you could be wrong i mean like some people have to be wrong because they're on different sides but what also helps is understanding what's happening with being pitted against each other so in in earlier days the whole secrecy around um, space travel and, and space beings was almost like used for the government to, as a way to keep us entrenched in fear because in the past they thought that um, once we we got to know everyone on the planet we wouldn't have we wouldn't be such bad enemies like with anyone on the planet if that happened there always needs to be a common enemy and so they wanted us to be afraid of space people because that would be a common enemy that we could all. But the problem is we're not. We have so many experiences and memories of being space people ourselves. We're not afraid of space people. Uh -oh. It's just family. It's like, welcome home, you know, come visit. And so that, that didn't work and stuff. So now the only thing they have to try to control us, and I don't know who they is, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. energies yeah. or whatever, is, is pitting us against each other. 
So it's a it's a manipulation game. And if you realize that whatever you're being told, the other side is being told as well to pit you guys against each other, then you're going to drop out. You're not going to play that game. So you can do the tabs on whoever's trying to pit you against others instead of actually going for the other side because they're they're like dumb bastards too, you know? Yeah. What about the checklist for chronic pain? I mean, so many people have chronic issues now, chronic pain. It's past life deaths. So if you have pains in your neck, it's one of four issues. Being hung, being choked, being decapitated, Jesus. or being... Um, having your larynx crushed being, and so so if you if you assume that and stuff do the tabs on being hung being decapitated and stuff and you can know if you've been executed if you the type of person who doesn't want to be seen in a crowd the reason you don't want to be seen in a crowd is because that public execution is horrific and and it's so personal to die and once you want to once you're setting up there to die and people are watching you that that causes an engram on you, but yeah, pain pain easily goes away with these things. What, once you remove what about chronic? What about not pain that just like in the neck or back or one one spot? But what about the fibromyalgia type stuff where it just it so feels like it travels all had. over? Yeah, that's what that woman had who got raped was fibromyalgia. That's what she's dealing with. So, okay, you want to get into the freaky parts? Sure. Um, so when I was. Locked up, I was tapped into the, that guy's pathologies and stuff. So you were locked up, like, locked up, like, as a prisoner? Yeah, well, I was kept in the basement and stuff. Um, actually, uh, yeah, I mean, at first I was just his roommate, and then gradually uh, I got um, Stockholm Syndrome, so I was actually trying to help him kill myself, like, trying to destroy my soul. Not just kill the body, because I was trying to destroy the soul. He, that's what he was trying to do and everything. But I was working. I became more um, conscious of the spirit guides trying to keep me alive and nature because I was sensory deprived through through that experience. But all it did was heighten my senses of wow. healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Communicating with trees and animals. And it's like, I wouldn't trade this for the world. It's just so beautiful. Um, so it was worth the training I had to go through. But yeah. So I had the conscious experience of being, um, I don't know, I don't think it was a physical experience, but it was on some kind of level of being um, converted and taken my humanity and turned into a cyborg body. So I had this artificial body and um, I had the heart, the lungs, the brain maybe, but it was like all synthetic. And I was experiencing that from the inside. Whoa. And so what really occurred to me is people who have like fibromyalgia, the reason some of them like, because they've been the hardest people for me to help because they're so attached to their pain. Yeah. Because in that experience of being that cyborg, I would have done anything to feel pain because pain is associated with humanity. So, so maybe some people in that experience are using the pain to stay connected to their humanity. Wow! And that's not something you would get like, like just from research and and medical dictionaries or stuff. That's something you really have to experience to get that level of compassion for that kind of thing. So then, there's one of my protocols in the book and on my website, genuinehealing.com. And it's called the peanut butter and jelly cleanse. Now, if peanut butter wanted to be divorced from jelly, this is the set of taps they would do. And so what it is is a bunch of sentences, and you put one thing in the first sentence and, the, and one thing in the second sentence, and you do all those taps, right? So for people with fibromyalgia, they would do um, their humanity in the first in the first. Blank. They would put their humanity and then put pain in the second thing. So you disconnect pain from your humanity. So you can like, really, that's a real core issue for, for people. So that would be a profound way to like release something like that. Yeah. And you also talk about like, giving people advice not to put their pain on social media all the time, right? To identify oh. with that. Yeah, because um, 
I'm really careful of that too when I do workshops and such. If people and people who work with me, I train them and stuff because if you need to keep a distance, I can release anybody's stuff. You know, I, I just do it all the time. People, people message me, can you release this? Sure. Can you blast out the COVID vi- vaccine so it's pure? Yeah, I'm blasting out the vaccine for everyone all the time so they'll get their vaccine and it won't poison them or in their minds or whatever so they're not cursed by their own assistance so i'm I'm sure just email me message me i'll blast out your your, and i hope i do that for them before they go and get their shots so they'll make themselves safe but um so what happens is our nervous systems weren't meant to handle all that and what people are actually doing is actually vomiting their issues and it's it's no different than your your energy is like your home. It's no different than letting your neighbors come over and dump all the garbage in your trash receptacles, and they're they're getting filled up and and emptying and 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 cluttering up your yard and stuff. Whatever someone has contained, um, the the good way to use the book is once you start using the tapping and the book, you can you can stop people from dumping on you by saying, "Hey, look at do the taps on this issue." And if they don't, that means they don't want to get better. They just want to dump on you. But then you have a choice. Say, no, if you don't want to do the tabs, that means that you're only using me and you don't really want to get better because this works. And so I just give them the tabs, and that's a way to keep them from dumping on you. But people really have to be educated on what they're doing. Like another thing they do on social media is someone who's in the hospital dealing with their worst issues. Well, oh, his grandma, she just had an open heart surgery. Isn't she lovely? No, grandma doesn't want her picture taken because there's almost like locking her in that engram of those issues. Put up a picture of grandma when she's young and healthy and vibrant and stop locking her in that image of disease. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 totally. Do you? How, when did you realize that you 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 thought you were the uh, reincarnation of Helen Helena Blavatsky? I was told I was her much younger, and it was like it was right before I met the guy who. Oh, right wow! When I met the Re- guy who, really? Right yeah, when you met him? Right before that and stuff. I, and I saw it in a book, and it was like for some reason I go, and she does look like my family. She looks like my sister and my niece, and. Her eyeballs and stuff. My mother used to always say I have horse spot eyes and stuff. And so I didn't want to believe that I looked like her. And I don't think I did back then. So I, w- I didn't want to believe it, right? So then, um, so then much, I had a lot of some evidence of it after that. Like when I was in the property, like I was like, why are they doing this to me? Why are they trying to destroy me and stuff? And the adepts were basically, they told me, they kept me doing that because I went to enlightenment on the property during all that trauma and everything. And they told me that I would be world renowned. And at the time I was just a massage therapist with some insights, but I wasn't like doing it. I wasn't writing. I didn't have all this healing, you know, whatever. And so they just told me that, you know, I had to go through this. And, and so when I got back, I held her, her book up next to my picture and my cousin just his mouth dropped, and it's like I look exactly like her. And it was like, and so what's interesting about her is her first book was published in my hometown, and in her, in her book, um, which one was that? Edition, I- Isis Unveiled, or I think so, because in in the first edition of Isis Unveiled, she talked about Rochester, which is my hometown, Rochester, New York, um, being a focal point of this higher energies pouring into into the physical world. And that's basically what I do with these tappings as I'm allowing that to come in. And she talked about wrapping, which is like tapping, but she called it wrapping. <laughs> and then um, just other interesting things. People see it in her, um, in my writings are similar and, and my personality and stuff. And, and I, I get a sense of her and stuff. Um, but also, she saw Lemuria being in Australia, and there's breadcrumbs of her, like, thinking of Lemuria as really special in um, Australia. And so I'm I'm working to move in towards Australia with my fiancé there, and um, someone channels this crying and talked about Lemuria, too. 
and it was like a second Lemuria. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't pay attention to anybody's stuff because I got my own stuff coming out. But I just heard that because it's like what we're doing in in Australia is bringing higher consciousness there, like a spiritual city like Shambhala, you know, yeah, or yeah. something like that. That it's that profound for the planet, just a, a focal point of healing and higher consciousness. So wow, I mean, because because Blavatsky was also warning, you know warning just normal people not to play around with this spiritual stuff. I mean, she was pretty, she was pretty careful about that, you know, not so, careful enough because Hitler, Hitler used it. So what she was trying to do is she was trying to balance out the male and female energy. She was trying to empower female energy with those sensitivities, but it got bastardized and she developed theosophy. But then, you know, when you have a focal point, like a leader of a a thing and they're ousted out of it, she was the heart of theosophy and they ousted her. So it became a mental thing. They couldn't, it couldn't no longer take them to the higher realms beyond the duality because she was gone and she was the focal point of that. But that, the beautiful thing about that is that's why I'm so pure, well, you know, I, I don't mean it like that, but I'm so clear in not wanting to do a group consciousness now and not doing that again. Because I had that experience back then, I'm hell-bent on not creating a group consciousness where they can, like, like they can, like, the ego can derail it and turn it into a power, power thing. Yeah. And um, some of the work that I'm doing now is like cleaning up what, what she put out there, like Hitler. Hitler used her techniques and her readings uh, and works to like to understand power and everything. So a lot of the work I do in energy is dissolve the engrams of the, the um, World War Two and um, the um, dissipating the psychic energy of um you know the um the trauma the, the the what the trauma yeah the trauma and, and a lot of holocaust survivors and a lot of a lot of people in the um the camps so. yeah 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 did you what can you dig into that a little bit how did she how did he use her her philosophy so <laughs> Um, there's other ones too that were prevented, but he understood energy. Like he knew when he, when he was doing the high Hitler, he was actually directing them. He knew that each human was an energy being. So when they were forced to do high Hitler, they were actually feeding their individual energy into him. So, and there's been others who've tried to do that. So what I do is like there's no time and space. So I go into that that um, stockpile of psychic energy that was used for power, dissipated, and give it back to all the individuals. And that's why how all of humanity heals is kind of that kind of thing. See, I don't think that we're waiting for these space people to save us. I think that we're doing it for ourselves and. And this kind of awareness of what I do is a huge part of it, is teaching the individuals to not give their power to someone else. Like like when people pray, they put their hands like this. They're sending their energy up to the sky. When they're praying to the sky, they're sending their energy up there. Where's it going? It would be much better to become a gardener. And this is kind of what Jesus was trying to teach, is become a gardener and put the energy into the ground and keep it here for the earth. So, and like even the churches that have the steeple on them, all the energy is like a um, divining rod, take, send it in up and out away from earth. So someone has to go back and pull out all the energy back to earth. And that's part of the energy work I do on a grand scale for humanity. And how did the adepts fit into all that? Because, I mean, she did talk a lot about the adepts, too. I mean, she was yes. like, you know, unless you're an adept, you shouldn't be playing around with this stuff. But you're, connect, you're connected to them, right? Well, yeah. So there's been, like, spiritual groups who try to, like, harness the adepts and use them for their group. And and the adepts, they're, they're badasses, but they also are, like, it, they're like 
they were human. They are human. They still have a physical form. So, but I'll say we're not mascots for any power group. So part of my goal is to reintroduce the adepts to humanity and they can work with the adepts one-on-one without them having to be um, representing a, a group associ- or yeah. associated with a group yeah. and given that because power is not going to, power is not going to win out. It's, it's time for humanity to transcend. So the adults have been working lifetimes onto this. And so basically what they've done is kept me alive. And since Hitler, Hitler was, was there's been other people who've come to earth and they were like rogue. And so there's been spiritual groups that have come and they've got collected all these people who were spiritually savvy, right? And and it was almost like giving them an accountability so they didn't go rogue and become um, power mongers and start their own um, world war, whatever. So so the adepts have been handling all of that. So the adepts were basically dealing with that whole group that had a lot of people who were, who were savvy enough to, even the leader was savvy enough to be another rogue like Hitler. I think it's slipping okay. out of control. I think it's slipping through their fingers. Um, no, no, no. It, it, it feels like it, but it's not. Um, trust me. Um, yeah, as, it has to like it. Like before, it gets more um, unified and more peaceful. The last thing is like the chaos, and so on the survival scale, you have anger, um, apathy, grief, lust fear, anger, peace. So so what's happening here with the COVID and politics is everybody's being shaken out out of their apathy and their fear and they're going to anger. And that's the last last rung before peace. So it's a natural in the evolution of humanity for that to happen. That's fascinating. Thank you. Are you going to be at peace right away, Graham? I don't know. I've been at peace for like... Eight months. It's better over here. You should come on over. Oh yeah, I'm peaceful. Yeah, you get a little yeah, you worked guys up. Seem yeah, peaceful. you get a little worked up from time to time. So are these? Are these? Uh, I mean, reincarnating. You have a, a note in your book there that mas- mastership is collecting all your energy from reincarnation or reincarnating in your experiences into the present moment. Yeah. So, so are, think about it. So so think about like the belief that time and space are like all happening at once, like your past and your future happen all at once, right? So you have all these experiences, and this is very interesting. People who have low thyroids, it's because in past lifetimes, they're stuck in the the um, engram or the experience of running for their life or fighting off the murderer, and so that engram is tearing out their physical body here. So what you do is you dissipate those engrams in that past thing. You take all the energy from these different um, peripheral lifetimes, pull it all into the moment. Because all an adept is is someone who doesn't have these peripheral lifetimes. And they've got all their energy into the moment. So it's a, it's a fast track to um, gaining your spirituality. Oh, okay. You don't... You don't get it there by giving your power to some other dude and saying, no, dude, I, I love you. You're great. And don't punish me. That's a form of enslavement. So is we there, all do this as individuals. Are people like Hitler, like, is he reincarnated anywhere that you know of? Or is he like, is that energy? Have you ever thought about that? Is that energy ever? I actually did a session on someone that felt like if it wasn't him, it was someone from the third wreck like that. So wow. I have, because, because the energy work I do is so deep and profound. I get to meet some of these individuals like up close and like, and, and so this person was like a real hard case. And I just, I'm like ruthless on, on some people like that. Cause you're trying to rip that layer off them and they think they're good and they think they're wonderful. So you try to strip that layer off of them and, let them feel their own vulnerabilities because I live in this vulnerable state. I mean, I'm like a soft shell crab all the time. And, and that's a state of like that vulnerability is not something to be afraid of. It's something to be embraced. So people need to get used to that vulnerability and being okay with that. Wow. So yeah, yeah, I've met some of them. Huh. 
Darren, you got any questions before we wrap it up? No, this has been fun. I mean, I'm uh, I haven't read the book yet, but I'm I'm interested in to get into some tapping. I mean, I like the rapping idea too. <laughs> <laughs> funny so i have a question for darren though Uh oh what happened eight months ago what what shift did you eight months ago i don't know why did we say eight months ago? because you said you've been peaceful for about eight months so you, oh you're... that's when i stopped caring about covid <laughs> oh absolutely covid's doing its thing and stuff and it's like um so can i do you need to wrap it up or can I no no something? no go for it yeah okay so so I have all these different clients come to me with all these weird things. One woman came to me because her children had had um, lead poisoning in their body, right? And so I did a session on them. And in a past lifetime, she was the she's the grandmother now, and they were running from her. And um, in a past lifetime, she was a slumlord, and she kicked them out, and and they died in that lifetime. So she had like this that with them and stuff, and she felt so bad that they had um, they couldn't move out and stuff, and they were renting from them. But her pipes were giving them lead poisoning. So I I told her all this, and I gave her tons of taps to do for her grandchildren. She came back within a couple weeks, and she said the kids got tested again for lead, and they're levels are in normal range now so that was me getting to see what i'm capable of doing so so um i've kind of streamlined that to be able to like blast out the adults will tell you you can like clean anything with pure love you and and because i do this so constantly i've ascribed it to my parasympathetic nervous system so what I, what looks like faith healing to other people is just me doing it over and over repetitively, pulling out the stagnant energy years and years and years. So it looks like it's just faith healing, but it's not. I'm actually doing the work. So I'll blast out the vaccines. I'll blast them out. And so, so when people have like this fear of it and the, the viruses and stuff. Sure, there could be these nefarious intentions, but those are only portals into different dimensions and stuff. Those can be shut down as well. So um, someone like myself who knows how to do that work is able to shut down those portals to those nefarious kind of, have the experience of being uh, um, a cyborg, but, I don't want to see artificial intelligence taking over Earth. So, of course, I'm going to close all the portals to that experience. And that's part of what my experiences have done. So part of the work I do is cleanse that thing and keep Earth innocent as much as possible. Because when I was on the property and I'm, I'm feeling all of his freakazoid, all that stuff, all these different species and stuff, it was terrifying. It was like maddening. And then I'm sitting on on the hill and it's like earth is so peaceful and innocent they're so naive why would you want to mess with that why do you want them to know about all the awful stuff happening in the universe let them stay peaceful and naive and just protect them as much as possible so that was part of my training now with the whole covid and everybody being aware of what's possible those nefarious energies can be shut down they are being shut down and i close portals to all those different alternative realities those scary ones so if people could only realize that i can't be the only ones but i'm working all the time i'm doing this for humanity and shutting that down so it is safe it is safe because because yeah i'm working on it and stuff as a matter of fact um like 30 years ago i got bell's palsy and i never ever got over it it's just part of right here i'm trying to get my face back but it was like it was my eyes couldn't shut i couldn't sleep because of the bell's policy so when i heard about the covid and the the new the new vaccines there and one of the side effects of one of them was bell's policy and then instantly i knew that that bell's policy that i got was taking it was doing the energy work i'm doing now to purify the vaccines i took one for the team and that bell's palsy back then was me releasing it from being in the vaccinations that and other things so that humanity could be clean and stay in the innocence well, we, appreciate, and get through this. 
We appreciate you doing that for us. Where can <laughs> our where can our listeners get the book or track you down? Are you on social media? Do you have a website? Yeah. Anything like that? If the listeners want to get some more, and, and I mean. Some of them check the no- show notes, but lots of them will just listen. So it's good to say it That's as okay. well. That's okay. It's it's nice. Even if they're hearing this, it, it's it's shifting the collective. Yeah. You feel the collective shifting all the time. Doesn't it seem a little bit faster in the last four oh, yeah. years? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been working on this. In the middle of the night, the, the, the bear guides got up. And when our politics broke open, like, that shit crazy the adults had me wake up just before that happens and they said get up and do all these new tasks and it was dissipating the psychic streams of energy of war of hate of power of all these things there were hours and uh, there was like hours of them and i put those out on social media and then i passed out and i slept for wow. hours, and hours. wow yeah, it's it's that kind of thing and and so you know how like you know how like people at, um like get caught up, they get caught. Like who are doing bad things, they get caught. That's because they can't get away with things anymore. And that's why they get angry because we've actually changed the trajectory of Earth. They had another trajectory of mass enslavement in mind and we effed up their trajectory. So, um, yeah. So um, the things about things that have happened like that, who that happened, I knew about that four years ago. That there's things I've just been sitting on. So I've been like doing the taps beforehand just so it didn't like it didn't go off as planned and stuff, that kind of thing. So what what when you had your cyborg experience, was it was that a different timeline or was that a future self or how, how like what what would that or was it a vision? It was the actual experience. I don't know how to describe it because it 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 was like a dream, but not a dream. It was like a, a vivid dream, and the, um. But do you think that was a future, a future human, a future timeline of humanity, or a possibility, no. or no? No, no. I know it's not now because I know I was given that, so it's not that. No, it was definitely a different. It wasn't Earth. I was taken off of Earth, but it wasn't. No, maybe, and, and, and it was in the past because um. It was it was like in the fifties or something, of the timeline of me and the guy who locked me up. So it wasn't it wasn't the future. It would have been the past if it was physical, but it was. I don't think it was even physical. But it was just teaching me, making me aware of all this stuff, so I could do healing of humanity. The yeah, way I do. yeah, maybe. So what's it... really yeah? So what's really um. I think it's what's really cool is, for one thing, I was never loved as a person in this lifetime. Nobody's ever loved me. My mother hated me, cursed me at birth. And the fact that I have this capacity to love is one of the miracles in life, that I didn't turn into a psychopath. And then all the stuff that's happened to me, dealing with this stuff, that I have some mental capacity. I mean, I'm not saying like whatever, but, you know, I can function. So it's not like I'm... It, it didn't take me off the rails or anything. Yeah. And I'm able to articulate and help others. And to me, that's a miracle because if if people knew what actually, you know, went on in this life, I mean, they have their own issues, but it's a miracle that I'm st- sitting there chatting with you and that I still help other people with private sessions. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. You broke the cycle. I mean, you broke many cycles. I mean, you broke your, you know, your family cycle, that one, you broke the, the the Stockholm syndrome cycle. I mean, you've made it through a lot of a lot of stuff. I mean, maybe that vision that 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 cyborg vision was strictly for for the chronic healing type thing. I mean, if that's what Absolutely. gave you that, if that's what gave you that epiphany about the chronic healing, I mean, that's going to be the number one. Seems to me like it's the number one thing out there for quantity of things that people have to deal with. I mean, there's all this chronic Absolutely. healing, this fight, this phantom pain going all over the place all the time. Oh. Not, not phantom as in not there just because they can't, it goes all over. Because know? it's, yeah. Cause so what happens is it's, it's in their other bodies. It's in their etheric body or their astral body. So we have bodies of finer vibratory rate at the same time and so the pain is in their past lifetimes i can tell what an issue is like if someone has carpal tunnel they don't want to go to work um 
um, what it is is they're still um, holding that sword. They're still fighting. So if people have this frozen shoulder and all that stuff, they're still holding this sword and shield. And if it's in the left arm, they're like still defending this. That's what I. Still, that's what my. Pa- I thought my past life. I've got a problem with my elbow, and I thought it was from yeah, holding a so shield you, in the in the uh, like eleven hundreds. Can I? Can I? So you want to tap for that really quick? Sure. It's really fun. Sure. We lay down our sword and shield in all moments. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll you do can that. do that if you want. I'll do that. Yeah. So to find me is on genuinehealing.com with a J. And um, people are, I'm still doing private sessions, which is amazing because, um, and a lot of people allow me to put my sessions up on YouTube. So you can go watch past sessions because a lot of people, actually do want to help humanity right so they're um so they let me put their sessions as vulnerable as they are up on up on youtube so anybody can watch those and got a lot right? along with them and you that's on genuine healing yeah. on youtube and i also have this cute little um Jen and her jammies is my fiance, Marvin, who's like a genius in business. And he's transforming business the way I transform the individual. So it's really profound that we connected and he's actually on the opposite side of the world. If you dug down in my ground um, and dug all through the earth, you would actually have been able to get to Marvin's house. Right from- <laughs> <laughs> so we were actually polar opposites and we are opposites. So it's really humorous because I come across as this goofball, like I love all life trees and stuff. And he's very serious and he's trying to control the, um, control the session and make it all timed. And he just can't, he doesn't know whatever I'm going to say and stuff. So it's just really amusing. It's a nice light way to get people to understand metaphysical things without it being too heavy. Nice. Right on. Well, thanks, Jen. This has been fun. Thank you very much. You guys have been very gracious. I appreciate you both. Awesome. Yeah, we'll put all your stuff in the show notes as well so people can just click on that to get to your website and your books. And you've written, like, what, 19 books or something like that? I mean, that's crazy. Now, now, the SFT Lexicon, you can get on my website. Yeah. It was on um, Amazon, but we're, we're pulling all the books off Amazon because they don't... They don't they they don't revere the the writer and everything. So we're working to like get those off. So as as so you can get this one on um, my my website, website yeah. genuinehealing dot com as they get um, edited. You know, I got them up there as fast as I could. Nineteen books in like four years because the adepts wanted me to get that truth out there because it was necessary. But now it's necessary to clean up all the books and like make them more polished to to hold up to time and everything. So they're good. They work. The tabs work, but they just need a little bit of refining. Yeah. 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 And then you're going to get off Amazon and put on your own website. You're going to sell it all from your own website or. Yeah. Something like that. We want to encourage other people to do that as well. Cause you know, you got to like stop feeding power mongers in any way that you can, you know, right on. Good advice. Thanks Jen. (laughs) It's a pleasure. Awesome. Thank okay. you. See you. Have later. a wonderful night. Thanks for coming on the show. Me too. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. And that was our chat with Jen Ward. What'd you think, buddy? Yeah. You gonna do some taffing? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about I think I I think I've um I think Maria's tried that before we went, and I think it helped her. Someone in the chat the said you should be a drummer, and maybe that would solve your drum problem. I don't know. Maybe it's your inner child just screaming I can't be, to be a, drum. a drummer. I can't. I can't. Well, this I'm is not, music is, is just not the thing. Maybe no. this is it, your thing. No, this is your I whole hang up is all manifesting itself at an Elton no, concert. I can't do it. I can't. It's too much work to keep the rhythm and all. I mean, was trying impossible. to get it out of you. No. You're keeping rhythm right now. What about you? We should, yeah, I am too. Yeah. I can play the drums. It, yeah. Am I going to tap? I'd like to get that book for the studio, actually. I just order a hard, I should get a hard copy in here. I've got the digital one, but, or maybe we do have it. Maybe we already have it. Yeah, I'll have to check. Might have had it shipped here already. I haven't seen it, I don't think. But, but it's good. It's got everything. It's got references to everything, you know? I mean, there's uh, 500 pages in alphabetical order of all the stuff you need to, to know. About from from the spiritual freedom technique. Well, there you go. Get yourself a hard copy. Maybe you could do the audio book. No, 
No? No. You already tried? There's about a million affirmations in there. It would get, it would get pretty, no. And yeah. just affirm some weird stuff to you. would be accidentally affirming stuff <laughs> while you're narrating. The yeah. <laughs> you're growing tails. And it's made, heal the world. Stuff. Yeah. Boobs are getting bigger. Uh, big thanks to Jen for coming on the show. Big thanks to you guys for listening. Even bigger thanks if you're one of the 1% that choose to support the work over at grammerica.ca slash support with a monthly subscription or a one-time donations once in a while, or maybe maybe you're signed up for Grammerica Outlawed over at grammericaoutlawed.ca or something else. You can always head over to Adult Brain, grab yeah, yourself even, an audiobook. Even the, free outlawed, even the free outlawed would really help with the, it all the algorithms, right? Yeah, review it, share it around, tell your friends about this the show, the work, everything we're trying to do over here. And have a contact at thecabin.com if you want to get on a tour and meet everybody, meet Randall Carlson. We're raffling off a spot right now. Yeah, do you think this will come out after the raffle? or This doesn't come out to the end of the month. Or the raffle is not till the 31st. 31st. To, okay, so this will come out before that. Yeah, so the raffle, how do they do the raffle? You just get a... Email Darren? PayPal. PayPal. Send PayPal $25 a ticket or 3 for $50 U.S. To contact at the cabin at gmail.com is the PayPal address you want to send it to. If you're having a problem with that, if you don't have PayPal, you can email me and we'll figure something out. But uh, you do that and put your email address in the notes. August 31st, we're going to draw that. It's a $2,592 ticket uh, plus 5% taxes and shit. So that means wow. $2,700 value. Uh, being raffled off, maybe yours for 25 bucks or three for 50, buy as many tickets as you like. The draw will be on the 31st. Of course, the trip is September 20th to 26th of next month, coming up quick. So if you want to get in on that Randall Carlson tour, Brandon Powell will be there, the Snake Brothers. Um, Brad Young. Brad Young will be there. Ben from Uncharted X will be there. Brandon Powell teaching us all the Wim Hof method. And, of course, the one and only Randall Carlson. Uh, yeah, grammarca.ca slash support. We love you guys. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. Who's gonna kill this sacred cow? You were never political, anyhow. Since when did you start trusting in the government? Since when was it okay to ridicule and shame your neighbor? Your opinions have become. Your opinions have become as fickle as artificial flavors What matters most to you? What the TV host told you to do? Or a moral compass that points true north or true? Who's gonna kill this sacred cow? You were never religious anyhow Since when did you kiss? The ring on the hand of the Pope Since when do we need Pharmaceuticals to cope Your soul has become Ever loving soul has become As brittle as communion wafers What matters most to you What the Holy Ghost told you to do Or a moral compass that Points true north Oh true I'm gonna kill I'm gonna kill this sacred cow Bureaucrats think I'm non-essential anyhow Since when has our culture become so lowbrow? It's all touchscreens And nobody has any know-how Your idea of fun Your idea of fun Is taking a thousand and one photos of your duck face Matters most to you What the celebrities most told you was cool Or a moral compass that points true Oh, true. I'm gonna kill this sacred cow. I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill your sacred cow. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill your sacred cow I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill your sacred cow I'm gonna kill
gonna kill, I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill. Just take a cow.